now coming to you live from an undisclosed location somewhere in the Ozark Mountains. It's Spooky Talk Show with Josh the Devil. And now, here he is, Josh the Devil. Hey! That's right, welcome back to Spooky Talk Show with Josh the Devil. I'm your host, Josh the Devil. We are here in season COVID. Uh, episode 9, I think. I can't keep track of stuff like this. I'm not even wearing pants. Um, before I forget, Michael Boyd. Michael Boyd, if you're watching, please contact us. I got a prize over here that's got your name on it, and I can't figure out all the YouTube connections to get through to you, to send you a message, to find your address, to send it to you. So, Michael Boyd, if you're watching, hit us up. All right, get that out of the way. Okay. Woo, doggies. Guys, we got a good show tonight. We've got Matt Besser on the program. Can we get some more applause for Matt Besser? Can we get a little... What? One? <laughs> oh, come on. We can do better than that. Let me try it again. We've, we got Matt Besser. There we go. There it is. There it is. There it is. And a second one. I, I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, before we can get to Matt, oh gosh, what to talk about? Well, um, hold on, I gotta figure out what buttons to push. I think it's that one and we're over there, that's right. Um, oh my gosh, you guys, it's been crazy. Puerto Rico is holding a non-binding referendum on whether or not they should become a state. Now the only question on the ballot will be, do you want to start paying income tax? All right, that's, that's fair. 2020 continues to show no mercy by taking the life of comic actor Fred Willard. There's no joke here. Just fuck you, 2020. Mr. Willard, not only were you in best in show, you were the best in show. Right. Puns are good when they're like that, right? That's okay. That's a good kind of, that's a good kind of pun. Now, I uh, <laughs> can't look at that guy. Uh, do you like the picture I found? There were so many pictures to choose from of this douchebag, but this one, I, I'm finding it hard to believe it's not photoshopped. It just... Anyway, infamous pharma bro, Martin Skirtran. He was denied release from prison to research a cure for the coronavirus. Uh, that's probably a good thing. Scarelli is serving a seven-year sentence for lying to investors about the performance of two hedge funds that he ran, withdrawing more money from those funds than he was entitled to get, and then defrauding investors in a drug company, retrofin by hiding his ownership of some of its stock. Oh, pretty sneaky. Now he... F that's right. Uh, now, he first gained notoriety for raising the cost of a drug used to treat infections in some malaria, AIDS, and cancer patients from $13.50 to $750 per pill. The, no, no, yeah, that, yeah, that's a slap. Okay. Uh, the judge in this case noted that while the coronavirus is a serious pandemic, Scarelli is a bigger plague on humanity. That's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, gosh. I think this one's my favorite story. I'm just going to sit and look at the picture for a minute. Oh, okay. Well, he may not have been Superman, but Nicolas Cage and Kate McKinnon are set to star in a film adaptation of Tiger King, which, of course, is the Netflix documentary Sensation about zoo owner Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin. Now, several other projects starring Rob Lowe, Tara Reid, and others are also being discussed. If these projects don't see the light of the day, then the Netflix documentary will have had more offspring killed than Joe Exotic's tigers. Mm, yeah, no, that's appropriate. You don't have to, yeah, no, you don't have to question that sound effect. That was, that was right on the money. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay. Sound effects are all having a good time tonight. Plowing forward, two suspects rob a convenience store in Louisa, Virginia, wearing hollowed out watermelon rinds with holes cut out for their eyes. Yeah. One arrest. Okay. All right. Easy there. Easy there, sound effects girl. One arrest has been made in what police are calling the Melonheads case. Melonheads a term for a stupid or foolish person. And this is the one time in recent history you could wear a mask without being noticed. And you idiots are wearing melons? That's not using your melon. Uh... 
No, no, there's no sound effect for that. It's just, I'm going to sit and stew in it. Well, that one, I guess, is either appropriate or racist because China has asked the United States to stop what they're calling the unreasonable suppression of Chinese companies like tech giant Huawei. Huawei. I had to figure out how to pronounce that one. Huawei, Huawei, Huawei. Uh, so basically, the country that unreasonably suppressed information about the coronavirus outbreak is now worried about unreasonable suppression. Uh, I don't know. I just read them. I just read them. And then I push a button and Nickelback shows up and scares all the kids away. It's what I do every week for fun. I don't know what you guys do, but that's what I do. I push a button, Nickelback shows up, the kids run away, they get scared, and then I laugh. Uh, like that, like a madman. That's right. Um, oh, gosh. Well, you guys, really quickly, before I get to the main event, I got to quickly tell you about, that's right, Patreon. Jump over to Patreon, if you dare. For as little as a dollar a month, you get exclusive content, like behind the scenes and, uh, you know, heads up on who's going to be on the show. And what's really cool is we're doing a bunch of new stuff with virtual reality and apps. So if you want to, uh, you know, actually uh, show off your uh, sketch comedy improv skills, you're like, hey, that guy's not that funny. I can do that. All right. Well, come on, because we've got some bits for you. And it's uh, you get paid with uh, comments that are where they're yelling at you. So, I mean, I, you want to sign up for that right now. I'm sure you're already signing up. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention really quick is our Teespring store because we get some t-shirts and some mugs. And uh, believe it or not, this show actually costs a little bit of money to run because um, I, you know, I got, I, I've got people who write these jokes for me and do some things for me. And uh, I, I, I'm not going to ask them to do that for free, so I'm sending them some money. And it'd be nice if I, if I had a little bit of help from you guys because then I could, I could actually pay them more. They could... You know, give more, more money and uh, maybe we get better jokes. I don't know. I don't know if that works or not. I've never tried giving the writing staff more money to see if I get better jokes. We could try that as some kind of crazy experiment. I don't know. I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> no, it actually yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense, actually. Uh, maybe we'll try that. Okay. Well, uh, I couldn't tell you what we've got next week. I have no idea. Uh, Skeeter Thompson from the legendary DC punk band Scream. He says he's going to come on, but guys, we're talking about Skeeter Thompson from the legendary DC punk band Scream. Uh, I was in a band with him for years, and so I'm here to tell you, don't hold your breath. I will love it if he's on the show, but the universe does things to Skeeter that it doesn't do to everyone else. And so if he can't make the show, it'll be through no fault of his own. So I'm not going to blame him for it, but I do know it doesn't always happen. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, you know my next guest, next guest, first guest, only guest, as a founding member of the Upright Citizens Brigade. You also remember him as Dave, the poor tortured guitarist from Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story, and one hell of an Arkansas Razorback fan. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matt Besser. Matt, can you hear me? Oh, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Wait. Now. Can there you we hear go. Me? Yes. Awesome. Wonderful, wonderful. Matt, how are you? <clears throat> I'm, you know, pretty good. Good to be back in Arkansas, virtually. Yeah, we are really glad to have you back. As soon as I put out the word that you were going to be on the show, several people were like, oh, please ask him, or tell him, we need Arkansas stories. We need stories about the Great. local Little Rock scene. So Love to talk Arkansas. I've got like just some quick formalities um, real quick. Now, this morning... Uh, my girlfriend and I were delighted to get up early and watch your stand-up special, Pot Humor. It was so good. I'm still kind of humming some of the songs in my head. Um, so uh, it, it's on Amazon Prime. So those of you with Amazon Prime, just jump over and watch that in the yeah, morning. Yeah, it's free. It, you can just watch it. I mean, that's just as good as it gets. Now, you are a longtime podcast uh, legend. You, you're uh, Improv for Humans. You've got over, what, 400 and something episodes. But now you've got a new podcast, po well, podcast, or should we say, called Smoke Me Up. It's got John, right. John Gabris, Horatio Sands, and I love the concept. Can you just give us a quick rundown of, of what this podcast is all about? Yeah, like you said, we started that one recently on 420, and <clears throat> or maybe the week before. But yeah, we talk about a, 
strain or two or three every week. Uh, guest smokes us up. And we, we try to be funny, mostly, to tell you the truth. Um, that's most of the podcast. But uh, getting high with someone isn't what it used to be, huh? And we used to, like, pass a joint. And I don't know if that'll ever happen for the rest of history. But uh, that's that's what we did the first eight episodes. And now we're, I think the future of pot smoking is having your own bowl. <laughs> um, and that's what we're doing right now. But, uh, yeah, it's a fun one. And I know Arkansas is loosening up and I'm um, uh it's easier to get weed there legally now right you have to have a medical card I guess it it has suddenly become possible I'm not gonna say easy but it is possible now there are places opening up you see billboards now um now I thought we were doing pretty good and then I drove right over the border to Oklahoma and I was like oh okay no we've got a long way to go but uh it is really nice to see it starting to take place. Uh, Hot Springs, I think, was the first place to get a real legitimate dispensary where you could walk in, you could show them your card, and actually walk out with something. Uh, That's the perfect place to have it first. Uh, yeah. Hot Springs. Hot Springs. For stoners. Definitely. Uh, you got to so, expect the Sooners are going to get things sooner than we are, So, but we're, we're going to be right behind them. Yeah. Uh, so you guys talk. You, you get guys, years. You get years black market. I assume. Or you're not going to talk about that officially because the feds probably watch the show. Oh, you know the feds, the CIA, the, the you know some guy named uh, Larry that sits in his mom's basement, and then that's about it. Right. Really, that's about our whole our whole base. So. All right. Yeah. I interrupted just, you. Sorry. No, no, no. Um, I was going to say. So, uh, I love the concept where you guys. Where you have a good co a good podcast where you're just telling jokes and telling stories and things, but at the beginning we get a little knowledge, we get a little weed knowledge. Where you're, where I you're... have learned stuff, I gotta say, um, and I will pass this on to your viewers, the ones that maybe don't like marijuana. That what I have learned is you really can't. I'm not pushing it, but I am saying that sometimes you'll get you'll get a strain that doesn't agree with you your first time, and then you 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 back off the the whole cannabis for the rest of your life, but maybe you just didn't find the right strain. I'm just putting that out there. Cause I've, we, I've learned a lot about the terpenes and all, and more of the science of, uh, I, I appreciate the subtle differences more than I used to, I guess. Cause I'm, you know, I'm old and it used to be, there's two kinds of weed, uh, free weed and the kind you had to buy yourself basically. So, you know, <laughs> we, we didn't have strains and fancy names. It was like, Oh my God, it was whatever guy owned the weed. It was, you know, that was the strain name, Mike's Weed. <laughs> I, okay, I may have actually smoked Mike's Weed. Um, right. Not yeah. to incriminate myself, but back in the day, uh, yeah, that's, that's very possible. Um, so, real quick, the UCB Theater. Um, yeah. Now, you, there, there are online classes. Uh, but now there's been some shows, right? So people need to maybe go over and check out that website and watch for some shows. Do you know of anything coming up offhand? Um, I, I know we're doing two to three shows a week. We definitely do one every Friday. And uh, I'm not looking at a lineup right now. But I, I bet you, if you're, if you're a comedy nerd of any kind, I'm sure we'll always have someone you'll recognize in a lineup. But yeah, that's... Once again, it's free and it's streaming. And yeah, you go to ucbtheater.com or UCB Comedy on uh, YouTube. We stream. Uh, that's the new way to do it. That's how all the, you know, every comedian's trying to find a way to do their streaming version of their comedy while we're, all the clubs and theaters are shut down. I, uh, I've been enjoying that myself. It's a lot like uh, watching a, a news station's first week on the air. Uh, mm -hmm. which, I, which here in Little Rock, I don't know if anybody remembers, but for a long time, Fox 16, Channel 16, they had no news. 4, 7, 11, news. 16, no news program. When they started doing a news program, that first first week was just the most chaotic, glorious masterpiece to watch. Um, just people ducking out of frame and things like that. So... Uh, yeah, we're all, we're, all, we're all learning the technology, and, and also we're doing our classes online too which we've never had to do um, we've done our sketch classes online but doing improv classes is new um but that's it's cool in a way too because a lot of teachers that didn't don't normally teach now have 
the time because they can't do the regular job. So that's, I guess that's the silver lining. That is nice. Okay, l- let's get yes. into some Arkansas because we've still got lots of time now, so we Great. can really get into it. Now, myself, I didn't get into the music scene until well, the early 90s, 92, 93. I, I was completely oblivious, sadly. I had no one to kind of go, hey, you know, there's, there's this thing going on over here. So I missed a lot. Uh, uh-huh. So... Now I had uh, I had several people message me and say you gotta ask Matt about the uh, the early days of the Little Rock punk rock scene, which I've heard some stories about, and every story I've heard was just amazing. So, um, can you tell us any particular memories uh, or things you like, things you miss about those days? Well, well, just to be clear, um, I think I was part of the pre scene, maybe than the actual scene. You I know think what I that's mean? That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, I wish I'd been part of the scene when there were so many bands, but, but, but when we, you know, my memory is centered around this place called the, the Annex, yes. which was, uh, off of Markham and, uh, Robbo, I'm sure you guys know he ran it and, uh, it was in like a greenhouse warehouse and that, that was the only scene I knew, but that, that was a true gritty beginning of a scene for sure. You know, there was, it was just be- this really hot warehouse and uh, just, just a nightmare place, I'm sure, for any legitimate band to play. Um, but I, I saw the meat men there and uh, the meat puppets. A lot of meat bands rolled through there for some reason. Um, but, yeah, th- that there were very few people who even knew what punk was so and you know and and i'm friends with all the guys in trusty but uh uh you know that's it was econo christ and and trusty pretty much uh and and the friends of at that point and that that it was really small um i didn't get to enjoy it as it as it blew up i wish i i wish i'd been there I wish we had blown up more when I was when I still was there. When I when I in, re- in retrospect read about other scenes around the country, I think, oh man, maybe we should have put on shows earlier. Because you you kind of think oh, that's just something that takes place other places, you know, until a scene starts, and then you go, oh, you know what, we can do it. Um, so good for Robbo for starting it, and good for everybody else for making it into something. Yeah. I had a I had a zine. I guess I had a zine, but it yeah. wasn't really about it wasn't about our scene. It was about just I was just reviewing uh, you know records um, called Barking at Life, and I did two uh, two <laughs> two of those and what, Bobby uh, Matthews and James Brady and Tim Lamb um, contributed and. Uh, and I don't even agree with some of my reviews that I've read. In well, I was going to, I was going to ask, I was going to, I was very curious. What records were you, what records were you reviewing? <laughs> One I review and I hated at the time, but now I love, uh, is a uh, crucifix Wisconsin. Do you know that, that record? I don't know that one. You've heard of the crucifix. I, yes, I, uh, I don't so, know that. I, I don't know. I'll have to. I'm gonna have to look that up after the show. Well, he has a very unique voice, and on a first, it's it's a. Uh, you have to listen. You, you have to grow to like, Crucifix. But I, I hated it in my review, and now I love it. <laughs> it's one of those things you hate, and then you want to listen to it again. You can't stop thinking about. It. You're like, I know I don't hate it. It just challenged <laughs> me, and actually, I love it. Those it's kind of like the best it's kind of like Flipper, actually. It's a very Flipper band, if you know Flipper. I I am, I'm aware of Flipper for sure, and that is exactly the same thing. Yeah, the first time you hear Flipper, you're like, oh, what? Oh, I'm being assaulted. What? I'm I. What's going on? What is this? I have no frame of reference. And then you think about it. Yeah, you're like, let me listen to that again, because and then and then maybe again and again and then yeah and then you yeah then you're in it. And then you're like, okay, yeah, now I get it. Well, well, I'm curious what stories you've heard. I'm not sure if I was a part of any of those uh, stories. Well, um, of course, there was the legendary... Um, uh-oh, it looks like maybe our stream just went offline. 
Well, we're recording this, so I'll re-upload it if it doesn't work. Um, the uh, the legendary Black Flag show at SOB, there was mm. that. I don't know what year that was, but I know Robbo talked about that as being he was one of the only people that was there that I could ever find. Um, mm-hmm. No, Henry, I wasn't there. Henry Rollins gave the quote, uh, there's very little rock in Arkansas. No. And, uh, yeah. and, and later I read in his book and I felt... What so, year was that? Uh, it would have been 85-ish, I assume. I'm not totally sure. But I know that I, in, his, in his book, Get in the Van, he actually talks about there's one little tiny section about Little Rock. And when I got the book, I couldn't wait to find out, what did he say about Little Rock? What did he say? And it was awful. It was, uh, I don't even think he mentioned the show. It was something about some punker stole his clothes out of his bag and then left their T-shirt in the bag. And he's like, so my shirt's gone and I've got this, this asshole's T-shirt. What? Thanks so much, Little Rock. And I was, I was, oh, oh I made just, I was like, oh, that's his impression. He came back years later and, you know, so no hard feelings there. But uh, anytime you, you hear a story about your hometown and you're like, oh, that's how they treat him. It was the same with David Cross. He came and played Vino's. And, I know that and story. I'm was, a friend of David. And it was, I, I, I didn't make the show, heard a little bit about it later, and then watched the DVD and was just yeah, I wasn't heartbroken. Happy about that. I, thought, I thought he was a little harsh on Venus myself. He, well, he was definitely a little bit of that, but I think if if he'd been maybe treated better by the crowd, there were some odd people in the crowd who just would not let him do his act. And heckling's one thing, but if you just stop somebody from doing their act, I mean, that's as bad as it gets. And yeah, so, then the venue, then the venue's got to do something. That is true. Right. Then I don't, I don't remember that part of the show. It was, it was not, it was not fun. It was not. Yeah, it made, it made it was another. It was one of those that made me, made my heart hurt. I was like, oh, oh, I've been to so many good shows there. It could have been the opposite experience for you, you know. But that's just how it ended up. Um, now, there was a big Governor's Mansion show. That might have been after your time. I'm not sure what year that was. I, I've always heard stories about that. Um, that sounds cool. Now, I'm sure really, most of the stories happen after my time. I hope I don't disappoint your audience that way. But, yeah, there were very few people. And that's what was exciting was even realizing other people even knew what the genre of music was, much less the, the bands that, that came to town. Uh, no, I think our our core people are definitely interested. They're the group that ended up, um, you know, making a home at Vino's, uh, which wouldn't have happened. And there would have been no DMZ. It sounded, it's, it, the stories indicate that there would have been no DMZ or Mandrakes. I don't even remember which came first. Had there not been the annex shows to kind of build, for all those people to kind of come together and meet and go, okay, well, now we're a group of people. And now if there was a business having shows, we could we could fill it and it would actually, you know, sell tickets and make money. That's what it seemed like. So, I mean, if yeah, when we, you guys, when we, we were into like, we're into punk, but we were also into Beastie Boys a lot. And I, I was into comedy and we had this one band, if I can call it that, which was more of a, <laughs> it was it was it was more like Vandals meets Beastie Boys or something, and that that's being very <laughs> kind. But it's it, in effect we were rapping, but it was punk, but it was comedy, and the guys in Trusty later informed me yeah. too much comedy. <laughs> and you need to go just do comedy, buddy. But uh, anyway, it was called Dogs Like Spot. And we would just bum rush places. So we would go to, um, I know we went to the Oyster Bar. I don't know yeah. if that's still a place. It is. And Cajun's Wharf. Is Cajun's Wharf still around? Cajun's Wharf unfortunately closed. They oh, closed uh, last year, I believe. Mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. it was. Uh, but anyway, we'd, yeah. we'd go up to these lounges and we'd just walk in and act like we were booked. <laughs> and. And these weren't places that had like rock bands either, you know, the Oyster Bar. Um, right, so, the Oyster Bar would have been having a lot of uh, folk and acoustic jazz, or or jazz yeah. and yeah. So we just we just kind of like just act very confident and show up and go, yeah, we're supposed to open up this other band at seven, and 
And I have vague memories. I think we we got up we got up at Cage's Wharf. I'm pretty sure, um, and we're I'm sure terrible. Uh, so if 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 I can take credit of that being early punk scene, maybe it was bum rushing um, venues that did not invite you. Uh, that's definitely punk rock. Absolutely, <laughs> just walking music, in. The music, I I don't know how to describe it. It it was. Um, S- something something not worth continuing probably <laughs> <laughs> hey my rule has always been if you're having fun that's all that matters if you go up and have a good time that's, that's all that's all that matters yeah you need me. the audience to have fun at some point though, i guess that's true just are you just true. jumping around your room that's true that's true well we you know, <laughs> i don't mind just jumping around in my room honestly that's all we're doing now that's yeah. what everyone's doing so, um, what, did, what were your favorite hangouts? What were your favorite haunts in Little Rock and the surrounding areas? Um, there were a few in particular. The, the I-430 bridge underneath it, uh, it didn't used to have a park there. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Which bridge I'm talking about? The, uh, not exactly. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Right on the edge of the river. Yeah. And uh, that, that's where we'd go build a fire. That was prior number one. And then, speaking of Cajun's Wharf, there used to be this, what we call the deck. It was just a deck that over uh, went over the river, and it was half a block from Cajun's Wharf, and there was some uh, dance club there. It's a name I can't remember. That was also right there. But uh, that was probably the place we hung out the second most. But, yeah, you had to find places... Where the fucking pigs weren't gonna mess with you, and the, you know, <laughs> adults weren't gonna tell you to go away. Uh, and then there were, let me think. And then we would, you know, when we were up to mischief, we would go where the rednecks hung out, and uh, we would we would fuck with them and get them to chase us. It was almost like a sport. But like they wow. used to get their trucks and circle up, you know. And uh, there was That's this group. Ballsy. Gr- there was this group that called himself the Roughnecks. <laughs> <laughs> and to be a Roughneck, I think you had to go find a random person and kick their ass. Um, that's my vague memory of it. And you also had to swallow chewing tobacco as my other, uh, uh, this a is cup a, of chewing spit. So we're talking a legitimate redneck gang with initiations. Yeah. You know, a high school gang. Wow. But yeah. And it, it was basically the opposite of us. And so they would all circle up outside of uh, what, what place was it? It doesn't matter. Some, uh, pizza place. And, uh, and they were always there. And like I said, they're all circled up. So I remember one time we went and we held this raw biscuit dough, you know, uh, just dough. And we went and we just fucking pegged them with biscuit dough and drove off, you know, and flipped them off. And we we're laughing. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> cut, to, cut to a month later. We'd forgotten about it. And we're in that same parking lot to go see a movie. And I, I pull in and I park and we get out of the car. And all those rednecks surround my car. And I'd, I'd just forgotten it was the same place. And it was in my head that, oh, they might remember what my car looks like. And I had a very distinct looking car, I guess. And they circled us. And boy, let me tell you, I was... I was a, a skinny man. I was not intimidating at all. Neither were the two people I was with. And uh, all these rednecks who like to do nothing but fight surround us. They're like, you're the motherfuckers that threw <laughs> biscuits and biscuit toe at our trucks last week. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I just got here. What are you talking about? We're going to go see a movie. They're like, fuck you. I, I recognize your goddamn Toyota. It was you. We're going to fight you right now. And we were trying to play dumb. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we don't even talk about yeah, But we're shitting our pants. It's obvious we do, we're guilty. And the guy goes, look. He points to me and he goes, 
or the guy who was yelling at me was much bigger. I'm like, you're going to fight me? You're so much bigger. And he goes, fine, you can fight the smallest one of us. And he picks oh, like, no. he points to like the smallest redneck in the group who's still tougher than I am. He's like, you'll fight him. And I'm like, all right. And then I squeal off. I pull off. I drive off. And then for the rest of the night, a fucking convoy of rednecks follows me all around Little Rock. And I'm shitting my pants the whole time, and we're running red lights. Anytime I stop at a red light, they pull up next to me and get out and start hitting my car with shit. Oh. I'm shitting my pants saying, get out, we're going to fight you. <laughs> so guess how I ended it. All right. And I'm serious. I'm serious. It went on for hours. But guess how? And then I was panicked. I was like, we cannot stop. I can't go to my house. Right, then they know I'm where you live. I'm going to lead all these rednecks to my yeah. house. So where, where do you, how did I end this? And I can't outrun them. I've tried to outrun them, but I can't. <laughs> I got, we're, we're, They're I got running red lights to keep up with me. Oh, shit. How do you think, how would you, how would you end uh, this? I, I got nothing in my, I don't know. I don't I know. I pulled into a parking lot of the police station oh, downtown. Oh, police station. I just went, all right, all I'll right. see if they're willing to fight me in the parking lot of the police station <laughs> Smart. so that's where we ended the night it's a tip to all you youngsters if you're in trouble you can always drive to the police station nobody wants to fight in the parking lot of the police station nobody no, no. so i don't know if that answers the where did we hang out question <laughs> uh well it's a great story regardless um we, you know we've had a uh, we've had a few another place i was oh, gonna yeah, tell yeah. you about thought this show was about ghosts or something yeah no there's all sorts of spooky content and we've arkansas is no stranger to you know the paranormal activity so uh if you've got a story man lay it on us i assume you guys have covered woodson lateral i'm i assumed you've covered that woodson lateral uh the Gurdon light we've talked about a kind of a few of the of the staples uh, right. For those of you who don't know, uh, uh, there's a uh, a certain spot. Or do you want to tell the story? I don't want to give anything away. Well, if you covered it, I have no, one not, I not have really. not covered. No, I mean, the, the back story is Woodson Lateral is a place that uh, you would, uh, the, the, average, the average high schooler would say, hey, uh, 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 girl X, come with me. We're going to drive out to this secluded spot and... Uh, the reason why is because there's this ghost story. And uh, now if I remember the story correctly, now I've never been out there myself, but if I remember the story, oh, really? you you go to a specific spot uh, and you say, uh, Mama Lou, Mama Lou, I've got your baby. That's what I've heard. And then uh, Mama Lou would appear and I guess chase you and you'd get back in your car. Those are the stories that I've heard. I've heard multiple stories about people who've done that exact thing. They've I've never heard Mama. Mama Lou, really? No. Well, I, see, that's all. That's all I know. So that's more specific than I got. But no, I mean, I wasn't going to talk about that. But we would. I thought. I assumed if. Okay, so there's, there's this road where the trees are grown, uh, so much that it forms like a tunnel, with the road. Right. And. This is what how I understand it. But like, if you see a light in a tunnel and I've heard there's there's like, you know, you get the fog and it hits a certain way and you turn off your headlights and you're in that tunnel, you can see like an aura or like a globe of light or, you know, a spirit, whatever you want to say when you turn off your lights. And I'm not suggesting that, folks, but we did it. You know, you drive down this tunnel and then you'd go turn off the lights and sh and you're out in the middle of nowhere, so there should be no light. And then you'd see in front of you this glowing apparition. But I guess the legend, I don't know, maybe I'm mixing legends, but I thought that you see a bride in a wedding gown at the side of the road, and she wants a ride. And then... Uh, <laughs> I think that's a different one. She, I, I've is that, that a different one? one? Well. Right, right. Okay, that might be a different one. But uh, yeah, I don't know the the mythology of what the ghost is. But I wasn't going to talk about that. I was going to talk about one. You asked where we hung out. There yeah. was a place in Quapa Quarter. Yeah. Where it was three Victorian houses. I guess all those houses are. But this one guy, 
And I looked I looked this up today because I was like, ah, I got to get it's such a specific memory. So I, I got the info on it. But I guess his name was like C.H. Henry or C.W. Henry. And he was a life insurance salesman, but he owned these three properties and he planted trees on them where where uh, well, I got pictures of it, actually. Oh, here we go. So, you know, he's in Quapa Quarter and he has just a normal yard like everyone else. Can you see this? Or is that reflecting? It's reflecting a little bit, but... Uh... But it's like he, he had this crazy yard with all these trees because he just planted tree after tree, so it became more like a jungle. And then he would paint these trees different colors, mostly white. So imagine a tree like an oak tree or a pine tree, but it's just painted white with house paint. And then he would cut out random photos from a Sears catalog and staple it to the tree. That's so you creepy. So imagine what and he had three houses right in a row. So imagine driving so we called it Voodoo Village in this article I have in here. Wow. It, it, they refer to it as the jungle houses. And I tried to look this all up online, could not find it, but it, I have the hard copy here. But uh, his neighbors, think about how his neighbors felt. Uh, yeah, like, that's what a, is this guy doing? Those are big, but we nice were spooked houses. out, and it was perfect for us because it yeah. was so spooky and fucking weird. These old and and the houses themselves, he let go to shit. He's painting the trees and not his fucking house. Sure. Um, and uh, but it was a piece of art. Basically, it was a giant installation is how I viewed it. But it was scary. And at night, especially imagine white trees, unnaturally white trees in the dark. And one night we snuck in his house or one of the three houses and took pictures. And, uh, I, and I told my wife that today. And she was like, what were you thinking he could have shot you. Yeah, yeah. Was he in the house? And, and I, I, I'm like, I don't remember. <laughs> what was I thinking? Wow. What was I thinking? But I, I guess I entered a house that I did not think had anyone in it, and we were looking for ghosts or something. Were you, was that middle of the night? Out inside his house. What's that? Was that in the middle of the night? That you yeah. snuck in? It was wow. like a dare, like you go to a a uh, you know graveyard. <laughs> Yeah, Which we did that, too. Did that, but... too. Sure. Well, Arkansas has uh, no fair share of creepy-ass graveyards. All right. Oh, so those sure. are the places I hung out. Well, I, I guess where I caused trouble, really. Man, those were, those were good stories. That, uh, whew. Okay. Let me make sure. Okay, good. All right. Um, man, I, we're almost out of time. But if there's if there's any other, if there's anything else that you, any other memories, anything else that, uh, uh, that you want to... You want to divulge to us, man? I we we've got. A I don't know. Bit more Were there time. any specific questions? I, I don't well, have punk rock history. You know uh, that's that's okay. Uh, I'm I'm more interested uh, just in in just like like what you're talking about, just classic old school Little Rock history, uh, high uh, jinks back in the day, that sort of stuff. Uh, so if I mean if you've got any other any other things like that, and what kind of what kind of trouble did you get up to in high school? I mean, aside from. <laughs> from from picking fights with rednecks. I mean, was that was that the only thing you guys did? It sounds like you guys must have had some interesting hobbies there. Um, yeah, I, I think back on on uh, on the mischief making we we did, and, and I, I compare it uh, to stories I read. We were never like violent. Like, don't get me wrong, I was never picking fights i wasn't big enough to pick a fight so that th that was unusual it was it was more like like one time um this is so stupid but uh one time we were skinny dipping in just some community pool in a rather rich neighborhood and and the police came and we saw the blue lights and i was drunk on on some mad dog 2020 myself mad dog 2020 yep and, you know, that'll take you to another state of mind. And and we hurt, and I didn't have any clothes on. And we were like, get the, none of us did. We are like, get the fuck out of here. So we all started running. And you had to climb over a fence to get out, 
you know, get in and out of this community pool. And when I did that, all I could find was my, my high tops, my black high tops and my, and my, uh, yellow Izod shirt. That's all I could find. So I'm, and I thought the other guys were on the same page of me of let's run. They gave up immediately and like, they just waited for the cop. And I thought I was being a hero, so I, I yelled out, fuck you, pig, because oh. I'm all drunk. <laughs> Magnar like, 2020 like, will make you say that. It will, yeah, it so will put I those think, out there. I think I'm being a hero because I think, oh, the police will follow me, and then my friends will get away. Right. So the police didn't follow me then. They just stayed with my friends, and they said, who is that guy? Or we're gonna go get that guy. Is he a friend of yours? What's his name? They said we don't know that guy. Uh, so they didn't give me up. Uh, they said we just met him. We think his name is Charles. No, okay, okay. So your friends so they didn't are, give are, me are, up. They're pretty good. That's pretty good. So now I'm, and I think the cops just let them go. Like, all right, just go home, get the fuck out of here. And that's all they were gonna do to me too. But now they're chasing me because I said fuck you, pig. <laughs> so now he's got on the radio and he's telling other police to look for this guy in high tops and a yellow shirt running around and that's all he has on and like I said I'm in this we're in this neighborhood that none of us live in we'd only gone there because we knew about this pool you could sneak into and my buddy who had, had been having the party we'd been drinking at was miles and miles away and I didn't have my car it wasn't my car we had driven there in someone else's car so I didn't have a car and I'm, I'm half nude and I got to travel miles across Little Rock to get to the closest house I know. So I'm running through backyards, just jumping over fences all drunk. Um, and I'm disoriented, and I hear, I hear dogs barking. In reality, it's just poodles and chihuahuas from the houses. And, but in my mind, it's German Shepherds and Doberman Pinschers who are on my trail as led by the police. So I, I think I'm I think there's police dogs after me all night. So I'm for a while I hide out in the stream like I'm in Hogan's Heroes, um, and I got like a reed and I'm dr and I'm breathing oxygen through a reed and thinking the the, the dogs won't smell me. We just, when it's some Pekingese barking from inside the house at me. But anyway, I'm all muddy, naked, and I probably get a couple of miles. And I am free for a couple hours. Um, but eventually a car, a police car, corners me in this apartment building uh, behind an apartment building. And there was this wood pile behind this apartment building. I went and <laughs> hid in the wood pile. And they put one of those big police, uh, you know, that searchlight on the car on me. And they're like, all right, Charles, come out from behind the wood pile. And I hear Charles. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't know my friends had said they didn't know me. So I'm like, oh, they're looking for some guy named Charles. I'm not Charles. I'm not going to get in trouble. So I come out, and I'm like, hey, guys, I'm not Charles. <laughs> Throw me in the back of the police car. I'm like, I'm not Charles. Well, I'm I don't not know Charles. who you're looking for. They're like, dude, you don't have any, you know, any pants. You're the guy that said, fuck you, pig. You're exactly what we're looking for. And... Uh, the only end of that story was I begged them to take me to the police station instead of my house because I did not want my mom to hear the story of the night. And when I did that, they took me to my house. They're oh. like, oh, we're taking you to your house. And they took me to my house and they rang the doorbell and it's 5 a.m. in the morning or the fuck. And I'm in the back of the police car and I see my mom come to the fucking door start weeping and crying my dad come the door he's pissed off and then like a month later i have to write a uh, apology letter and deliver it to the policeman that i said fuck you pig to so i have to go down to the police station the same one that i drove into to escape the rednecks uh and i had to deliver it to that officer my apology letter for saying fuck you pig that's not a very punk ending to that story, but uh, I'll take the I'll take the real yeah. ending. I'll take the real ending because that's that's what what honestly I think you did better than I would. You fared better than me. I would have in that scenario. 
I, I'd have gotten a couple of blocks. They'd have caught me. I'd have, I'd have started running way too fast. And then hey, I, one and more then story. Got... It made me, it made me think of, and this involves two members of Trusty. Oh, then band, we gotta so. hear it. We gotta hear it. So Bobby's at Governor's School, um, in Conway, right? At Hendricks. Yeah, right? Hendricks College. Yeah. And, and. We're not in it. He's in it for the summer, and we go to visit him. And we had been partying all night, all night, and never gone to sleep. And it's the next day, and somebody has a uh, a uh, air gun, one of those pump guns. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not a BB gun, but like a air pump gun. Yeah. And, but it looks like a real fucking rifle. Oh yeah, yeah. Is the main point. So we go, we go looking for him. And we're, have you ever seen that movie Suburbia? Yes. We're in a very suburbia state of mind, let's say. Okay. So we're okay. we're walking around, trying to prove that we're very punk. <laughs> James Brady. I think he had a shaved head then. I'm not sure, but. He take he goes we're we're just what we don't know where he is. This is pre cell phone. We don't know where Bobby is. We just know he's at on the campus of Hendrix College. So we just drive up there, no destination other than the campus. So we get there and we're like, we don't so we just start yelling his name. Bobby and going into dorms. Hey, anybody know Bobby Mouse? Get the hell out of here. Who are you guys? Fuck you. So we're going into one dorm. We can't open the dorm, the door, and uh, it's a glass door. And James Brady takes the door and he headbutts it. And you would think that would just hurt his head. He smashed the glass door with his head, completely shattered it. So what the detail I've neglected to say, I'm carrying around that, that air rifle with me. Oh, so. In today's world, you can't even imagine that happening for even a second no. but this is the 80s like a guy walking around yelling with a rifle is not gonna last too long on a college campus but that's what i was i had the gun in my hand james puts his head through the glass door everyone assumes i've shot out <laughs> this door of course because it's really loud and everyone on campus we're like in the middle of the campus everyone just looks at us i'm sitting there with a gun and what what do we do Run! Run, yeah. So we say run. We never saw Bobby. We never found Bobby. We just yelled his <laughs> name a lot. Busted a door and ran. We got my car. Started driving. We couldn't believe it. We're all exhilarated. We're like, oh my god, we just busted that fucking door. And we had a gun. And we drove away. <laughs> they're they're going to follow us. Something's going to happen. The police are coming after us. So we drove all the way from Conway back to Little Rock. Never got, you know, the police never came. I was like, oh, man, we got away with it. Well, I can't believe we got away with it. I drop off James. I go back home. And this is probably noon or something. I walk in the door. I open the door. And my dad is just sitting there with his arms crossed, you know, shaking his head back and forth. Go uh -oh. sit down right now. And I'm like, what the fuck? So they had seen my driver's license. And they had uh, sent the troopers after us. Um, and then the troopers apparently had been called back when we had been identified. When someone goes, wait a minute, don't send the police after them. I know who those guys are. We'll get them in trouble a different way, basically. But... Uh, once again, I might have been better off to have been actually busted by the police instead of my parents. <laughs> That's the end of that story. That was so <laughs> stupid. One of the stupidest things I ever did. That's awesome. Uh, I've got I've got several right, stories dude. about government. Thanks for having school. me on the show. Man, thank you so much for doing our little show. Um, it's great to it's great to hear some stories about uh, about Arkansas and Little Rock. Uh, I can't wait. Uh, for the next episode of podcast and everybody watching should, if you've got Amazon Prime just jump over tomorrow uh, wake and bake watch pot humor on uh, on there or some other streaming service uh, yeah and then, if you go to map yeah. if you go to mapbester.com I have links to all this stuff 
um, that you you can find out. And all my stuff seems to be pretty free, so that's that's the best part. But but it's good yeah. to connect with Arkansas people again. It's usually over um, the Razorbacks, but this was this was much more interesting. Yay! All right, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm going to uh, have to punch back over here. Uh, we will see you later. Uh, stay safe, my friend. See you guys. Bye. Woo pig. All right, woo pig. That's right. Woo pig suey. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa, we got bright. Hey, uh, so that's it for this episode of Spooky Talk Show, and we're going to let you guys go. Uh, you know, if we're lucky and the stars align, and um, if his girlfriend helps him out, we might have Skeeter Thompson from the legendary DC band Scream. That's right, Scream. You remember them. Dave Grohl was their drummer. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, uh, you know, with a little bit of luck, maybe we'll see Skeeter next week. Uh, regardless, we'll see you next week.